Yeah, uh, let me just start by saying, uh, before we leave, if you could just uh, fill out this little evaluation form, some comments, some feedback um, you know, for future workshops and stuff. Uh, that would be good. Um, so now I'm going to move over to some, basically my academic workflow and a bit more on the workflow part. But I the, the first part was really more uh, um, examples and not so much part of the workflow, but more like the, you know, uh, shortcuts and, and ideas and programs. Uh, I think I divided my workflow into four stages. Um, the first stage is just like searching and stuff. I talked a little bit about the Google Scholar and, and uh, these things. Uh, second stage, organizing publications. Uh, I also showed you how I rename uh, PDFs or have that done in a way. Uh, import metadata, um, check if need, if need be. Um, uh, I always, I, but during my MA, I sometimes took notes and I sometimes didn't. I think it was a bit, anyway, I've, I've grown to realize that if I don't take notes of an article, it's as if I haven't read it. Mm -hmm. I might as well not read it, period. Like, it's that bad. Sorry, but that's how it is. I need notes. I need notes. Um, I don't necessarily need very good notes, but I need something. Uh, and... I would say I need good notes if it's a good article, and I need, you know, if uh, another important point that I also, I would say I'm in the process of kind of realizing, in the process of working on this, do I need to skim an article or do I need to read it properly? Uh, I probably should skim more, read less. Mm -hmm. Sounds almost like cheating, I think. And I was like, no, I need, I need to read it properly, you know. But the thing is, you know, you should bar probably be going through a hand or like, Quite a, few, a number of articles every day if you're like you know actually actively studying. Uh, not that I am at the moment; it's somewhere else. Um, but if you are, and then you know, skim more articles. You know, oh, this oh this is not very interesting, or this has one good point. This is something I can get back to if I ever get into you know language socialization or indigenous education, whatever it is you might conceivably be interested in later. Um, so, but when I do it properly, I read and I, I highlight as I showed you. Um, then I go back and then I usually take notes based on my highlights. Occasionally, I do it parallel, but I find it a bit disruptive, and you know it can be good because then you're kind of thinking about something. But usually, I read through, and then I take notes going through my, especially my highlights, and I always make a summary. That's I started doing that a few months ago, but I realized that it's really helpful to have usually one or two sentences of a summary. Uh, summary. This is just a sample of some random document, uh, random article, notes from one random article. This is one sentence. But it's enough to give it a gist of this particular article, and it's my own words as opposed to copying the abstract because that's always too long. To me, the 200 words abstract is too long to get like the essence of an article. That's what you want to read again if you want to like, go back to it. But this is like my takeaway from this article, right? Um, always have page numbers so I can get back to it. And when I quote, I always mark it clearly so I know that this is a quote and not my own comment. Can you put No, this is a text document. Uh, I use a particular program for this, but you can use Word, you can use Evernote, you can use any, you know, even a text editor. Uh, and I was always, you know, I have a system of organizing my notes actually, but you would probably just have to do it in folders on the, or Evernote or something like that. Uh, so I always do this. Um, this is, most articles are not this elaborate. Uh, some are longer. Some have fewer quotes, some are just a summary even, like it varies a lot. And I try to make it vary, I try to make, you know, important art good articles, important articles, more elaborate and better notes. And con conversely, bad articles, or not interesting articles rather, have poorer notes. And are you doing this flat chain? Not really, no. In this one, I, I occasionally have a little reflection, like, a, oh, like, um, you know, I usually don't do much of that here. This is more of a um, general notes. Okay. I mean, you. I mean, I know people do that. You can you, you can easily might as have might as well have like a section of. I think I have comments. Occasionally, I have like a comments um, mm -hmm. title, and I have like a short comment. I'm not that much of a reflection kind of guy, but you know, some people are. Right. Okay. Okay. So you know, if you definitely do do it differently, this is just I'm just telling you how I'm doing it, and you know, maybe you want to have another. We are doing it all together. It's like, for instance, reflection is a good idea actually to have like 
but it's more like your personal, you know, how do you can interact with it? How does it, what, is, what does this article tell you, right? I don't really do that, but maybe it's a good idea. Uh, so uh, preparing to write, or the kind of writing pace, if you like, even, you know, where's the line between preparing and writing sometimes is blurry. Uh, write, uh, write an outline, uh, and I'll throw in some arguments if I already kind of have a sense of where I'm going with it. Support file, sometimes spreadsheet. Uh, this is a sample of an outline and how it has evolved. So this is a mature paper I wrote uh, in last term. Just a couple of points. You know, I have a sense of introduction. I have a clue what I want to review of literature. Uh, all question marks, you see. <laughs> I have no, I had no clue, and I didn't even know what the hell I was going to discuss here. This is my first outline. No, and this was a topic I knew nothing, nothing about. It was completely blank. Uh, so, you know, I, it evolved, I added a few more points, you know, I started with English and then, oh, ESL, ESL, EIL, EUL, English as in all these different languages, international, foreign, you know, whatever. Uh, research question changed it, added some points to make or some arguments of some of sorts. Yeah, 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 no, uh, English as a second language, English as a foreign language, English as, a, English as an international language. English as a Ugandan language. The last one is my construction because I am wrote about Uganda. No, that's fine. There's so many acronyms flying around here. So uh, yeah, you know, moving on. This is actually not really a direct continuation, but towards the end here, I think this is like my last one. I maybe have more an elaborate, uh, you know, points that I want to make. Like, and I really try to work with. Going between, at least ideally, I like to work between like the not the parts and the whole, but the whole and the and the and the essence, or like the right. the main points, or like, like your thesis, like your thesis and progress, like going back and forth and making sure you're not going off track. Yeah, sort of, and or maybe more so like so you, you have a 20, 30 page document, and like you kind of what am I even saying here? And especially if you're writing about something you don't know that well, like this paper, I didn't know idea where I was going. I didn't know what to call. I changed the title a couple of times. I don't even know. Like, <laughs> I'm probably going to change it again. Uh, I didn't even know what I was writing about in the end. No, am I writing about English as a Ugandan language? Am I writing about intercultural competence? What am I writing about? You know, like I, I didn't know. <laughs> I was actually really struggling with this paper. Um, but I try to kind of keep, by keeping this one, I try to keep it down to earth and have some points. Like, what are the arguments I'm making here? What am I, you know, what is this, you know, these, this section about? Good, good, good. This is what it's about, right? Well, I'm not quite sure. Is that the topic of the textbook you were looking at? Yeah. Okay. So I was looking, I was doing a visual, ana visual textual analysis of, of, uh, te of textbooks, yeah. Because this is a, I think the one person I'm trying to help with this course, she came to Scott. Uh -huh. Yeah, there is an element of back and forth, definitely, and I'll 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 show you that visually a little bit at least, some sense of that. Yeah, visual is a good. So uh, we can get back to that also. We'll have a kind of practical session, and I also want you want you to share your thoughts on how you do things. So we can get back to it. Just to quickly run through the last couple of slides. Um, so another thing I also do, or actually I don't done it once, I have to confess, but uh, it can be practical, is to, so I was working on this uh, term paper on an, a topic that I didn't really know very well. I had no clue about it, actually. Uh, so I had like, was it 20, I don't know, 20, 30, whatever, quite a few articles on, you know, this disparate this topic. So what I did was I pulled out, for, and, and I had a, something, some notes of this sort, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, for each of these articles. So I went back and I reread them and I pulled out only the things that I felt were directly pertinent to this particular term paper. 
I always like the summary, I think, or at least some of the summary to kind of be able to, you know, read through. And then usually a couple of uh, one or two or a few lines. So here I've taken out the summary and this one sentence. And I put it in, in a new document, like to kind of compress the notes so I can actually reread it and like, oh, this is this is what I'm working with here. You know, this is like my, the, the matter. This is the, the data that I'm kind of working on and for my literary view, right? So I uh, compare this with this one. You see that I've only extracted something and I also have Mushan Yesi and I have Nichols and Ndura. And of course I have many more, but there wasn't space here. And Ndura, as you can see, was quite important. Like I have a lot of points. I want to write a lot about this article and Mushan Yesi is more like, you know, a little you know, one sentence maybe in my thesis or two, right? Um, it's a bit of work, but if, especially if you're stuck, it might be a, a way forward to kind of, you know, sometimes you just, what do you do? And then... Can I ask you this question? Uh, I, I'm finding, I, I go to the computer a lot more now. I don't use the book so many notes. Uh, but I find that it's Well, I, I, well, I mean, this is, there are many ways of doing this, you know, <clears throat> some have mind maps, some have different things, you know, people have different things. This is what I did, at least for this term paper, and it worked pretty well. I. So I, every paper I wrote, uh, read, I wrote something like this. And then from each of these, I mean, we're talking, was it maybe 20 articles I had for this term paper, 20, 30, I don't remember, you know, whatever, handful of articles. And actually kept, I kept reading also, but this, this I did after maybe 10, 15 articles, and I kind of started, okay, I have to start writing. Mm -hmm. And then you do this, and then maybe you add another five as you go, right? Or you, you know, you read something, and then, oh, you have to look up this guy, and then, you know, you know how it is, right? And you find new yeah. stuff. Uh, but, but I started at, you know, 10, 15 something. But this is a way of extracting, because when you have this, you have this much text, or you know, maybe a couple of times as much, it's manageable. Then you can really, yeah. then you kind of, the ideas kind of start emerging a little bit, then you can more easily deal with it, because reading 20 pages of notes is just too much. You start from the yeah. beginning, and then you forget what you, where you were, you know, and you, so you have to condense it, and you, you also have to build out. You have to like go between the two. We can, we can get back to it also. I think I'm about to finish here. So we wanted to get some time at the end to, um, for you guys also. So another thing I do is have this support file. Basically, as I'm writing, I have another, uh, usually typically another Word document open where I have, you know, thoughts, uh, things I want to add. And delete, if I delete a paragraph or a text, I usually keep it there because I don't like deleting it altogether. So I usually have like a, another document that is more like, you know, scribblings. Or oh, this sort, you know, key points, delete something here, uh, you know, important point, dual the use, theorize that, you know, these kinds of things. Uh, things that only make sense to me and in its own, it, it doesn't make any sense to anyone else, but I kind of, as I'm working on it, I have some, you know, things where I, you know, it's like a notice board. Right, right. Uh, spreadsheet, I've done it for one article. Uh, looks a bit messy. The thing is, I, I find myself dealing with like 60 articles and trying to make an overview. And I know that sounds like a lot because I've read them before, many of them. Um, 
I wouldn't necessarily recommend that on a general basis, but you never know. Depending on the size. Yeah, and not least the task. Like, is it required? Is it, do you really need that kind of overview? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you have enough articles, you might just need it. Or especially if you want to talk about them in more technical terms. Like, I was counting countries here, right? Yeah. South Africa, Sierra Leone, Nigeria. Like, if you kind of need that overview, spreadsheets are good. If you don't, if it's more of a general thing, maybe it's just an overkill. Um, last slide. So this is my this is my uh, workflow for uh, writing academic uh, literature reviews, especially or academic texts based on literature reviews. Uh, you know, search, do that, all that stuff. Uh, this is what I just spoke about. Uh, decide on whether I want to read it properly or not. Always highlight if I read it properly and take notes. Always write summary. Um, and then occasionally take keynotes uh, or like or make a kind of a summary. I don't necessarily do that. I can also just skip this and go straight to writing. Uh, this work doc support document and the writing outline, uh, they kind of feed into the writing of the paper. So these keep evolving and then they kind of keep growing and they keep supporting each other. That's mm -hmm. These were the documents I showed you, like some examples of my support documents for one, part, one article, one, one paper I wrote, German paper. And the outline also that kept evolving, right? Started on, you know, out, uh, outline number one, outline number five, outline number six. Yeah. They keep uh, evolving. Uh, and then occasionally I might use a spreadsheet also to feed into that. So <clears throat> now we don't have more than, more than 10 minutes left. Um, this is this is how I visualize my uh, workflow. And this is not something that I kind of knew. This is something I just sit down and like, what do I even do, you know? It's like, I don't, I don't I, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert on this. I'm just another student, but uh, you know, my experience, or this is like what I kind of, this has grown into become my kind of workflow, or at least an idealized form of it. I don't actually do all of these steps in this, you know, perfect manner, and then we, you know, it's a bit more messy. But it gives you an idea. So, uh, this is some other things that other people have done. Uh, not more, I mean, I just Google academic workflow or something and found some random illustrations, but just to give you some sense of what a workflow can look like, right? It can be linear, it can be a bit more, you know, star-like, if that's the word. Um, so, what I would like to do now is to invite you to think about how do you, you know, organize and write and uh, take notes and, like, do all these things that have to do with writing. Like, how do you do it? Um, <clears throat> You you can you know think about how I you know made this a flow chart flow chart or you know get inspired by these, um, but I want you to kind of reflect on it and see if we can have a few minutes at the end to just share it a little bit or if you want to say you know a sentence about it. So I have some uh, flip charts, so you can and some some uh, markers. Um, so what I would suggest is I, I would like for all of you to make one each. Because they are kind of personal, but at the same time, I think it's also good to, if you like go in pairs or something, or you're or three together, to kind of, or if you just like next to each other, I just kind of suggest that if you can kind of, as you go, kind of show people or look at the next person next to you, you can kind of get a sense of, oh yeah, this is a good way of organizing it, or oh, I forgot this, or I also do this, you know, or I don't do this, to get a sense of what other people do, right? And then you know, the last couple of minutes, I just want if you just want to share a couple of points, just say, you know, this is how I do it. This is what it looks like, or this is one thing I want to highlight. Uh, we can do that at the very, very end. So if that sounds okay.